Correct timing in NMAP scans is important for the accuracy and effectiveness of the scan. In the case of outside scans, it is usually preferable to use slow scans to avoid devices such as IPS and IDS, whereas in a scan from an internal network, quick scan options will be preferred. While the fine-grained timing controls are powerful and effective, fortunately, NMAP offers a simple approach with six timing templates. You can specify them with the uppercase T option and their number, 0 through 5, or their name. The template names are Paranoid, 0, Sneaky, 1, Polite, 2, Normal, 3, Aggressive, 4, and Insane, 5. The first two are for IDS evasion. Polite mode slows down the scan to use less bandwidth and target machine resources. Normal mode is the default, and so T3 does nothing. Aggressive mode speed scans up by making the assumption that you are on a reasonably fast and reliable network. Finally, insane mode assumes that you're on an extraordinarily fast network or you're willing to sacrifice some accuracy for speed. Max retries option is to specify the maximum number of port scan probe retransmissions. When NMAP receives no response to a port scan probe, it could mean that the port is filtered, or maybe the probe or response was simply lost on the network. It's also possible that the target host has rate limiting enabled that temporarily blocked the response, so NMAP tries again by retransmitting the initial probe. If NMAP detects poor network reliability, it may try many more times before giving up on a port, now, while this benefits accuracy, it also lengthens scan times. So when performance is critical, scans may be sped up by limiting the number of retransmissions allowed. You can even specify max retries zero to prevent any retransmissions, though that's only recommended for situations such as informal surveys, where occasional missed ports and hosts are acceptable. Uh, the default, with no uppercase T template, is to allow 10 retransmissions. Host timeout is used to give up slow targets. Some hosts simply take a long time to scan. This may be due to poorly performing or unreliable networking hardware or software, packet rate limiting, or restricted firewall. The slowest few percent of the scanned hosts can eat up a majority of the scan time. Sometimes it's best to cut your losses and skip to those hosts initially. Specify host timeout with a maximum amount of time you are willing to wait. For example, specify 30 minutes to ensure that NMAP doesn't waste more than half an hour on a single host. Note that NMAP may be scanning other hosts at the same time during that half an hour, so it's not a complete loss. NMAP utilizes parallelism and many advanced algorithms to accelerate the scans. Especially in the case of external scans, it may be necessary to close the parallel scan. That is, to send a single packet to a server at the same time. NMAP utilizes different options for this purpose. As we saw just a few minutes ago, you can manage the timing using uppercase T option. If you use the templates, 0, paranoid, 1, sneaky, or 2, polite, parallelization is closed. That means these templates serializes the scan so only one port is scanned at a time. Scan delay option causes NMAP to wait at least the given amount of time between each probe it sends to a given host. This is particularly useful in the case of rate limiting. Solaris machines, among many others, will usually respond to UDP scan probe packets with only one ICMP message per second. Any more than that sent by NMAP will be wasteful. A scan delay of one second will keep NMAP at that slow rate. NMAP tries to detect rate limiting and adjust the scan delay accordingly, but it doesn't hurt to specify it explicitly if you already know what rate works best. Okay, so by default, NMAP calculates an ever-changing ideal parallelism based on network performance. The max parallelism option is sometimes set to one to prevent NMAP from sending more than one probe at a time to hosts. NMAP has the ability to port scan or version scan multiple hosts in parallel. NMAP does this by dividing the target IP space into groups, 
and then scanning one group at a time. When a maximum group size is specified with max host group, Nmap will never exceed that size. So if you specify maximum number of hosts in a group as one using max host group option, there will be only one host in the group and only one host will be scanned at a time. So what do you reckon the difference is between the max parallelism and the max host group? Did you see it? When you set max parallelism to 1, Nmap sends only one packet to a host at a time. When you set max host group to 1, Nmap scans only one host at a time.